understand, guys, am I properly audible and visible both? Am I properly audible and visible? Great. Hi. So can we have a quick greeting from everyone in the chat section before we begin? And who all, just, just a, I mean, heads up, who all are here uh, from, uh, say, from the first day? Who, are, uh, who all are here from Yash's orientation? Who all are here from the orientation class? Is there anyone who's continuing? Okay, me, got it. Great, guys. So we've got good numbers. That is what I got to know. So is it that we're continuing from the first day? Great. I think a lot of us are continuing from the first day itself. Okay, good to have you guys. So uh, guys, just a reminder, I believe all of us do not know where to find the assignments, right? So that is pretty confusing for a lot many of us. So just to give you an idea, I'll quickly share my screen and show you where you can find the assignments. Okay, one second. Let me quickly share my screen. Okay, so once we go to this uh, bootcamp page, once you log into the portal, right, you can go to the free bootcamp section. Once you go to the free bootcamp section, you will be able to find the latest bootcamp here. And once you go to the bootcamp page, although the links are shared in the bootcamp group itself, if there's anyone who's not there in the bootcamp group, you can directly go ahead and join the bootcamp group from here itself, right? So there is this link to join the WhatsApp group. So you can quickly join the WhatsApp group from here or you can go to the bootcamp page and find all the videos, the recordings, the assignments here itself. Or you can find uh, the assignments, one second. Once you go back, you can find the assignments here once you sc scroll down as well, right? So this is something. And since today is session three, you can find the class link here, okay? Now, guys, make sure after today's class, you are going ahead and solving these assignments. This is free lecture. Yes, okay, a lot of people ask me. I remember a lot of people were texting on the group itself or maybe were texting me personally. Uh, is this a free lecture? Yes, the bootcamp is free, of course. Right, you can go ahead and attend all of these classes. Make sure, in fact, you're attending these classes because once you attend them, you will be getting a certificate from our end, but for that, make sure you're solving the assignments, right? That is something. Now, uh, guys, today, going ahead, since we have a lot of many people joining in, what's the topic for today? Can you share the link here for the WhatsApp group? Okay, uh, I'll share the link in the chat section soon. Meanwhile, just to give you a heads up about what's the topic for today, uh, we'll be covering resume building till 9 p.m. today. And after that, your instructor, Avi, would take over. Now, guys, a quick question. How many of us already have a resume? A quick question, a yes or a no. How many of us already have a resume? Is the voice not clear? Okay, great. So, I think the yeses mean that we have a resume already, right? Great. So since a lot of people already have a resume, how many of us have actually, how many of us actually think that we have a good resume? Or what do you think is a good resume, guys? Just a general question. I mean, do you think your resume is good? Do you think your resume can be presented to a company? Or what do you think makes a good resume? It's okay, okay, I think. Okay, we, we've uh, got very honest answers in the chat section. <laughs> okay, so guys, there is a guest joining us today. And here's Ria. Uh, she is an SD at Google and she's been working for a long, long time now. So she knows, uh, she has a very fair idea about what these resumes are to have, right? In fact, she has her own resume, which is pretty much good to go. So what all it takes to get into a great company with a good resume, something Ria would be covering today. And you can share with her your resume in the chat section. She can probably give you good insights on your resume itself, right? So once you have this session, feel free to share your resumes in the chat section as well. And maybe you can get a feedback for your own resume. Ria, on that note, you can take over and probably we can have you interacting with the class now. Yeah, sure. So thank you so much. 
Uh, hi guys, so I'm Ria and I'm currently working at Google and today I'll be taking this um, resume building session. So, and I'm very, very excited to interact with all of you, but just let's make one thing very clear. Uh, do not hesitate whenever you have any sort of doubt, just stop me or write it in the chat box. Just feel free and do not hesitate. Any, any sort of a doubt, please do write it in the chat box. So yeah. Let me just share my screen. Um, just a moment. All right. So guys, uh, since you already know, like uh, first let me just introduce myself. So I am currently working at Google and I have prior experience of working as an uh, SD intern at Microsoft. I have been a mentee of Microsoft Engage program also. And I'm having an experience of open source, uh, being a fellow at MLH and I'm also an organizational lead at Coders Cafe. So that's pretty much about myself. So talking about like, First of all, I would like to ask, like, how many of you have actually applied for any sort of job as of now? Please write in the chat box if you have ever applied for a job or like not. Just write it in the chat box so that I get an idea. All right. And have you guys made your resumes also? All right, all right. So we have mixed answers in the chat box. That's great. All right. So do you guys know what's the basic significance of resume? So whenever you are actually applying for any company, each and every company, although they have a different procedure of their own, the recruitment procedure is very different or like it depends on company to company. But one thing is common in each and every company that is resume. So the first thing that a company is going to check is your resume and they're going to shortlist you on that basis. So your resume needs to be very sound and like it needs to be very, uh, you know, impressive so that company shortlets you. And after that, you get qualified for the interview rounds. So although like despite the fact you are very sound technically, but if your resume is not good, then there's a possibility that you will not get shortlisted. So that's the reason that this, um, the first, yeah, exactly. It's the first impression of our abilities. Very correct. So it's basically like your first impression as one of our students said. So it's very, very, very important to build your resume very carefully and to make it as impressive as you could. So like, as I'm saying the recruitment process, so usually it's like your resume screening or CV screening, then you have your one phone screen interviews sometimes and followed by some technical interviews. And at the end you have your HR interview at Google, Google are uh, talking about specifically of Google. They always shortlist students on the basis of their resume and then they have their technical interviews. So, but there's one major, uh, I would say confusion between a lot of students. They say resume and CV both are the same thing, but it's not. Basically, a resume is a very concise document that you like actually summarizes your professional or your educational background. And it is usually of one or two page only, whereas CV is a detailed document which highlights a person's professional and academic history. It could have multiple pages. It could have like it's basically used for academic purpose, but resume is used for a professional purpose. What is a phone screen interview? So it mainly happens in Google or only that uh, sometimes instead of having a interview on face to face interaction, they'll just call you, they'll give you some questions, they'll ask you some very basic technical questions, they'll give you some application based questions or some situations. And that entire interview happens on the phone itself, they'll provide you a document link. It's like instead of a video call, it will be a phone call. So that's a phone screen interview. I'll definitely share my uh, LinkedIn uh, ID in the chat box after the session. So let's move on to the next part. So yeah, so I'll share my resume now with you guys. Uh, but before proceeding, uh, like, do you have any major major doubts as of now?
all right all right okay uh did you want uh, I am from like I've completed my B Tech from Delhi Technological University and I'm from CS background only computer science, but that hardly matters. Okay, you if uh, irrespective of the fact that whether you are from a technical background or you are from a non tech background, DTU is Delhi Technological University, which is formerly uh, Delhi College of Engineering. So like irrespective of the fact that whether you are from a technical background or not, you can still apply to all the jobs and like um, uh like there's like there are a lot of opportunities and there are a lot of programs that are recruiting people so i don't think so that technical background like people do have a upper hand but you can still apply so this is my resume that i made in my college so whenever like uh, so there are two types of resume a one column resume and a two column resume so when you feel like that you don't have uh, uh, much to write in your resume i always suggest people to go for a one column resume if you feel like you have enough content then go for a two column resume and it makes no difference honestly like uh, people think that okay uh, i should make a two column resume that will make it more impressive that's not the thing if you have a lot of content then write it but don't add fake content into it so that's the first thing uh, that you need to uh, like um, keep in mind and secondly your resume should be strictly of one page i always suggest everyone that the resume should not be more than one page because uh, res uh, usually the hrs who are actually shortlisting your resumes or maybe the ats machines they don't give much time to each resume so it should not be more than one page and it is strictly advisable to keep it short and concise so that's the very first rule that we are learning today that whenever you are building your resume it should be short crisp and concise uh nowadays ats friendly resumes are how can we crack this we will come at this later on like that's the later part of our discussion so I, i'll shortly um uh, like uh, answer it and we have to prepare both cv and resume no you don't have to prepare both cv and resume you have to prepare resume only when you are applying for a job you are supposed to uh, prepare a resume but when maybe you were applying applying for let's say some college or maybe uh, some higher studies at that point of time you make a cv and uh, all right so see uh now the very first thing that comes in your resume is your name like here you could see i've mentioned my name your phone number your contact number your roll number and uh, your email id linkedin github website if you have made any portfolio website so the upper section basically involves your personal details so you're supposed to add your if you are a college student add your roll number if you're not a college student just remove it just mention your uh, uh address maybe or address as in like which city you are residing in and uh, mention your email id but it should be like uh, i prefer a left indentation for the personal stuff like phone numbers and address and for the email ids and other links like linkedin github website people also mention their code chef like there are some coding platforms that we will be discussing so there are certain platforms like code chef lead code code forces if you feel like you have a very sound rating at these platforms you can mention these links also is at this section and some people do make their portfolio websites also so this is the section meant for mentioning the portfolio website i okay so then um we'll go step by step i'll just open a whiteboard also just give me a minute so uh, there are multiple sections uh, in our resume uh, the first uh, first resume first very first section of your resume is your work experience so when i talk about work experience it's the most crucial and i would say most important part of your resume because whenever an hr is actually reviewing your resume the, that, that's the very first section they are going to have a look on but if you are going for a one column resume then you are supposed to mention your education on the very top so let me just show you a single column resume as well just give me a second
Meanwhile, if you have any doubts, please feel feel free to write it in the chat box. All right. So let me just start with the experience part as of now. So. what about the freshers so for freshers you can actually um uh, keep the experience part experience doesn't mean uh, just the job that you have been doing it could be internship experience also like it is actually advisable that once you start learning you should also enroll yourself in some internship programs like uh, uh so yeah so it's like there is a lot of platforms where you could actually get internship opportunities keep looking for uh, like opportunities on linkedin intershala and there's some telegram channels even aqua job keep providing you the job opportunities so apart from the job opportunities i'm uh, talking about the internship opportunities that you should actually no uh ngo will not be included in it because um uh as you are applying for a technical interview so your resume should consist of only technical tech related um content so just uh, refrain yourself from adding any extra curricular activities or maybe like all such kind of a things uh in the in this section like in the uppermost section you can also mention a summary if you want like a summary of your resume or maybe some a few lines about yourself like which summarizes your entire professional career you could also mention that talking about the experience so when we talk about the experience you should mention where you were actually working what was your designation so designation followed by the company you were working in and the timeline the date or the month or maybe whatever the timeline is just mention that as well now we basically follow a star rule so this is something that you need to keep in mind star rule is basically uh sure i'll share the template of my resume uh, at the end and for a fresher how should a man a fresher resume so for a fresher also like uh, if you don't have an experience um you can skip it for now but like i'm just telling you once you have experience how you're supposed to mention it in your resume so let me just cover it and then we'll come to uh yeah sure i'll zoom it so when we talk about the experience part always do like there should not be more than three pointers in your uh, particular heading so let's say if i'm saying that i did my software engineering intern at microsoft i have mentioned this just three points which three points you should mention what was your role at that particular company or maybe a particular what project you were working on and what significant impact that you actually made so in three points you should focus on telling what impact did you created while working on that product and uh, what was the tech stack that you were working on if there's a particular tech tech stack and um, uh, what all features that you like what all accomplishment you were able to make uh, when you were interning or maybe working at any particular company so that's the very first thing then there should not be more than 3 work experiences in your resume it is strictly uh, said that your resume should not contain although like it might be possible that you have a lot more than 3 uh, more than 3 internship experience or job experiences work experiences basically but just re, re like refrain yourself from adding it just add 3 maximum 3 work experience so then comes the education part okay so talking about the education part in education part you should mention your degree the first engineer like whatever college you have actually studied like maybe undergraduate or like post graduate degree so just mention that and mention your cgpa but i would say if your cgpa is below 7 please don't mention it so because then it's making no impact on your resume so just mention your college and the degree uh what if we don't have a btech degree what if we have done diploma in cst you could mention that that that's not a problem you can mention it and uh, uh can we skip a year uh i would say uh you mention the gap also like it is actually considered a gap so it's better to write, like a uh, interview will actually ask like if there's a gap in your resume why there was a gap in your resume so you should have a very solid answer to reply back that okay that was the reason maybe you were preparing or let's say if someone is from non tech background and they are trying to shift to a tech background so they take a pause for one or two year 
at that point of time you could actually tell the resume uh, the uh your interviewer that uh, okay i was actually preparing myself to come into or change my industry change my field uh that's why i was preparing for it and that's the reason why i have a gap in my resume so i guess that answers your question so talking about the education part you're supposed to mention your uh, college the btech or the post uh, like undergraduate or post graduate thing then you are supposed to mention from where you have done your 12th uh, like you completed your 12th standard and your 10th standard same thing happens here also if your passing percentage is less than 60% refrain yourself from adding it in the resume otherwise please mention it because uh, that also adds value to your resume so what if uh, we don't have uh, we haven't done btech okay yeah i guess i have answered that question if you haven't done btech that's not a problem uh, you could just uh, like mention whatever degree or whatever stream you have actually worked in uh, or opt opted for and then you could just justify that you are um, your career goals are not aligned with the uh, field that you were studying for and now you want to explore the technical uh feel so that that's fine all right then comes the academic projects so at aqua job also people will be uh, like you will be learning a lot of projects you will be building projects also over here so that's a very like for a fresher it is ve uh, very much advisable that you should have projects in your resume it's possible that you are not having work experience but it is not at all entertained that you are not having projects in your resume and yeah again the same thing happens not more than 3 projects should be there in your resume so let's say if i have mentioned any particular uh what's a uh, project in my resume so i'll place a link of that particular uh, project also maybe a github link or maybe if the project has been deployed so you could actually mention the deployed link also write a timeline also that's a very good way of doing or maybe making a resume so that's the thing now i always advise people that when you are writing about your um project it should contain only three pointers first pointer means what the project is all about like if it's a handshake project that i have written in my resume what is handshake i'll write about it second would be all the features that you have actually included so just write about the features of that particular um, uh, project maybe any significant um, feature that it is having and then the third point will always be the text stack so it's like the introduction of or like a brief intro of the project then what all features are there of the particular project and then comes the text stack mention the text stack so this is the star i would say just uh, i'm writing it in the chat box also please go and read about what is star uh, methodology while you are writing a uh, this resume uh you are uh, uh this is my resume that i wrote in my college so if my cgpa is below 6 then you should not actually uh, mention it in the resume just mention your college and your stream and can a research paper be included in project definitely and that comes under the work experience only so do mention your research paper so the format will be just mention the college that or maybe um whatever organization or whatever place you are actually working with and then write there will be three pointers again first pointer what is your project all about second pointer what all features you are actually what novelty is there in your research paper maybe any new idea or maybe any new feature or maybe some significant impact let's say if you are making a, a very simple r thing that i'll take is let's say if you are making a uh, emotion detection program okay like um Uh, when you are writing in a chat box like people are writing a lot of uh, things in a chat box and there are certain programs that could actually detect that whether it's a hate comment or whether it's a, a happy comment so we do have programs for it so let's say i'm making a emotion detection program in my uh, as a part of my research project so let's say if uh, there's already a uh, people were able to bring 80% of accuracy and you were able to make 85% of uh, you were able to reach 85% of accuracy then 
you can actually mention it in your research paper in under the work experience that this is the significant impact that you created and this is something different that other people were not able to do so this is how you write and the, at the end you will mention the text stack so three things what is the resource paper all about second will be the features or maybe any significant um, accomplishment of yours in the resource paper and third will be the text stack so i guess that answers your question so then uh, in the text stack also make sure you are writing sometimes it happens that you are part of a group project okay it happens that you are participating in a hackathon like slowly and gradually uh, okay do you guys know about hackathons all right so hackathon is basically uh, like a coding competitions like you must have taken part in a lot of competitions in your schools or colleges but um, hackathons are very similar but coding competitions uh, like they, it's very short time duration like a one day or maybe three day or a week hackathon so where you actually take a problem statement and you build a project over it technically you will build a platform let's say vaccine booking system you are uh, like at the time of corona when there was uh, no vaccine booking system available so you might come up with an idea okay i'll build a, a vaccine booking system so this is one of the idea so in a group of like 3 to 4 people people like come together and they build a project so in when you are actually part of a group project and you feel like okay i need this project now i want to mention it in my resume so the way of writing it in your resume is mention only your part like what was your role in that particular project let's say you were handling the front end of the project and um, if you have uh, or maybe the back end of the project or maybe you were handling the database like when you are building a project there are three parts of it front end back end and the your database thing so just mention what part you were involved in what tech stack you were working on and what was your contribution to the project so whenever you mention any project of a hackathon this should be your um, uh, strategy of writing it in your resume is that clear any confusion till now any doubts please write it in the chat box if we have changed our field of work then do we need to mention our projects and correlated things while applying for a job uh if you were uh, like at least mention the work experience thing like let's say if you were working you had a co like work experience in a core field and you don't have anything of tech as of now so just mention it that yes previously you have worked in so and so company and this was your field of interest at that point of time so just mention it so that even uh, if you will skip it and you will not mention it in your resume so it will be uh, shown as a gap that you did nothing at that particular because what i said is that you have to mention a timeline also like i have mentioned so you are supposed to mention the timeline kind of thing so yes you should mention it and talking about the projects uh, you can if you don't have any technical uh, project but please do go ahead and uh, go for like uh, adding technical projects in your resume because um when you are applying for a tech job obviously recruiter is going to see how much you are aligned with their interests and uh, how sound you are technically let's say there are two candidates who are applying for a particular job and if let's say uh, you are adding core uh, just core uh, projects and one is adding tech projects so obviously the biasness will go to the person who is having a technically sound projects so that's why it is advised to add technical oriented projects how many projects are needed to mention in a resume you can add two to three projects not more than that two to three projects is an advisable amount of quantity of projects that should be added in the resume which links provided in resume are check um sorry i didn't get you as udemy a good platform yeah udemy is a good platform for like lot of courses but like what specifically you are talking about any other doubt guys or can i proceed all right so then we'll come to the uh, okay so then we'll come to achievement section so uh, let's say if you participated in any hackathon or maybe you have any or uh, maybe you were a topper at your 
school's college or maybe you participated in some competition uh, or maybe you were uh, like participated in some coding competition and you passed a really good rank just add it in the achievements that is like um, that adds a star point to your resume so that's like if you have if you don't have achievements as of now as a fresher that's totally fine but try to like uh, i would say start uh, like once you start coding once you gain understanding of how to code i would really encourage you all to start uh, uh, like giving contest at platforms like code chef code forces or lead code so the rating um, of these particular platforms really adds value to your resume so this is something that you should really do uh where did you study moon stack uh that's very really different uh, conversation for now but yeah like there are a lot of platforms available like on youtube and like udemy also there are courses on udemy coursera so you can refer to any of the courses even at apple job they are going to help you out with the front end and back end thing so you can study here also can you tell me which is the best source to create a professional resume yeah definitely i'm going to share some links uh, that's the next part of the our um, session so i'll just share that and where can i learn coding in efficient way you are a part of aqua's of so definitely they are going to help you out with that uh, is it advisable to add participation certificates in achievement section yeah if you have participated in a hackathon yeah definitely if you have participated in some maybe any kind of a coding related stuff you can add it but make a different section of it like uh, in if you uh, like make a section of certificates and then add all the certificates but i would advise not more than 3 certificates just uh, like uh, whatever you feel like, like these are my top 3 uh boot camps or maybe top 3 uh, cla- uh classes or maybe hackathons or maybe any course that you have enrolled and you feel like that will add value to your resume add it but not more than 3 so this is the achievement section then um, in some colleges people do give pors which is position of responsibility that hardly matters whether you add it to your resume or not that is totally a uh, college specific if you are in certain clubs and you have some like uh, some designation over there in that club you can mention it in your resume otherwise you could leave it then comes extra curricular activities so you, here you could actually add like uh, let's say if you are uh, very good at sports or maybe you are good at painting or maybe you bad some really good uh, or uh, maybe any any particular achievement that you have in extra curricular field you could add it here so this is the section where you could actually add uh, your extra curricular uh, activity kind of thing and lastly you will enter your skills so maybe programming so it is also comprises of two headings subheadings one is programming languages where you will mention all the programming languages that you know maybe c c++ or any java whatever languages you know and make sure you are not writing any any random stuff in your resume because people at times they do like in order to make the resume look very impressive they will just add a lot of languages or maybe some fake stuff like some copied projects or stuff like that but in the interview then uh, the interviewer will definitely ask you he might he or she might ask you that okay if you know java can you please write a code in this particular language or maybe you have written java script in your resume so could you please write a snippet of code doing so and so function so never write any text star that you are not well versed with similarly tools and library when you'll start doing front front end back end or any development field you will start learning a lot of tools and libraries you can mention it over here as well so that's about the resume now i am going to discuss what are the do's and don'ts when you are actually building your resume so starting about the do's whenever you are building up uh, like resume make sure you are quantifying your resume when i say quantifying it means that um, let's say uh, like add numbers to your resume let's say if you wrote that i was working like i made a project okay so if uh, maybe let's say you are like add numbers in any way possible like uh, numbers could be in this way that if i made a video conferencing app and i could write that it had 10 features or maybe i could write that um, the latency rate is this or maybe any any technical or statistical term that you could add 
you will learn it later on but make sure and just keep this in your mind that whenever you could add numbers in your resume do not hesitate doing it rather force yourself to add numbers to it it should be one page resume and for a fresher strictly one page resume and not more than that for a mechanical background do we need to mention a college project or co related certification while applying yeah definitely you can uh, you can do that till the time you don't have any uh, technical or tech related projects you could definitely add it in your resume uh what is the difference between java and python that's a very vague question to be honest like java is a very different language and it's like what's the difference between english and hindi so it's like that so th those two are very different coding languages that you use so that's it in which section do we mention pr can we mention freelance definitely you can mention freelance freelance comes under the category of work experience so you should mention and it adds a lot of value to your resume uh if i was a president in first year of my college can i mention that yeah definitely you can do that in the section of por or maybe extra curricular activities can we add resume in great learning so sorry i couldn't get you yeah so we were talking about the do's so first one is quantify your resume is this point clear to all of you that you should quantify your resume because i i'll be talking about what is ats and um then you'll just get to know that um, what i actually meant by quantifying your resume then comes uh, like spacing okay so indentation spacing and how clean your resume is at times people make a very cluttered resume like they have a lot of content in their resume but it doesn't seems very nice or soothing like when you look at the resume it should look clean okay so and there should be spacing like let's say uh, the difference between software engineering and this worked on fixing l3 the difference between the gap that i have placed between these two should be constant when i am adding another section like mlx fall and open source line teaching assistant and mentor so this consistency should be there when you talk about the spacing this indentation thing ki like the spacing from this particular line it should be consistent for all the sections uh, that are below it the link and like okay so some sections you are supposed to bold like uh, when i uh, when i was talking about quantifying thing i have actually mentioned that i was able to bring the success rate from 78 to 97 so i have mentioned it over here similarly i want the uh, the interviewer or whosoever is actually shortlisting my resume they should actually see what are the best part of my resume so you can actually bold that part like this was a significant difference that i was able to create so i mentioned it and i actually bolded it similarly you could uh, like here you could see i wanted to uh, like mention or highlight that i was part of microsoft engage mentorship program so i just highlighted it maybe if i want to highlight some hackathon name i just did that so this is uh, what you do in order to like um, a, 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 like first of all your resume should be very eye catchy clean it should be consistent the consistency should be there indentation should be very proper spacing should be there the font size should be common throughout your resume okay if for headings you are using 10 font and for the other things you are using 9 font it should be common throughout the resume it is highly advisable that your font should not font size should not go beyond so this is one thing that you need to uh, keep in mind uh, and how we can get high packages through coding or full stack that's a very uh matlab just apply to the companies packages doesn't matter if you don't have any achievement you can skip that that's not a problem uh, that's why what i was saying is that once you start coding start uh, giving contests like once you gain a decent understanding of how to write codes then you can start uh, giving um, this uh applying for contest like at codes a uh, code chef or lead code then you can write the rating whatever rating or whatever rank that you are getting over there you can mention it in your achievement can we add our image in where it is uh can we add our image in the resume no strictly no so okay i'll that, that was the thing that i was going to cover in the don'ts of the resume so the very first don't of like while you are building a resume is never ever mention your image because you are applying for a technical job when you are applying for a model like for modeling or something then it makes sense but in tech 
it doesn't make sense so never ever add your image in the resume and which are the free courses to complete certification as well as improve technical skills there are a lot you could get it on udemy also you could get it on coursera also like being a student you will get free courses everywhere and what should be the font style you could just any font style would work but a very simple it should not be very and just don't add so many designs to it like people do it italic or maybe bold underline don't do it please it should be very very simple and sober so you could go for any font style georgia cambria or maybe area but it should be uniformity should be there throughout the resume don't do ki heading is from georgia and then you are doing the content thing with arial or maybe cambria that, that that's not a thing and which uh, then can we use colorful templates for resume you can but it is advisable to keep it simple that's black and white that's the very basic resume major you will find people building so i would not suggest go going for a colorful template but you can that, there's no rigidity no one is going to like raise any question regarding that is it necessary to no i already answer it's a big no do please don't add your uh, for photograph in the resume which is best place for practicing a coding skills see you will be getting a lot of coding questions to perform our aqua job only like um, after you perform in every module they will be giving you a lot of questions at their question bank so you can practice over there and then there are other Uh, platforms also like lead code geeks for geeks and code chef code forces you could uh, practice questions over there as well uh how to find a good project um okay so that that's a very uh, okay so there's nothing like a good project basically it's like for a beginner you can just kick kick start yourself with any very simple project let's say make a snake and ladder or let's say make a uh what you can make make a any booking system you can make any like let's say canteen me a canteen system management system or maybe library management system you can make any and get started with any basic project you'll understand how what is the structure file structure and how code is actually written and that that's thing otherwise then come up with a very unique idea if you're talking about a good project then come up with a very unique idea then try to build it okay uh, most of the things you are already going to have on the internet on youtube you will get already built like already made projects like let's say if you're willing to make a video conferencing app you'll get it on youtube you'll get it on github but how unique Lee, you are integrating it. That's up to you. That's what makes the project good. Uh, so, like maybe unique features that you are adding to it, that will make your project like to stand out from others. Currently, you are in India or USA. I am in India. What should we name the file? Which file you are talking about? Can we add Hindi essay competition certificate in the resume? Ah, uh, no, I would not suggest that to do. You can add it in the um co-curricular co activities if you have like really good rank in essay writing competition. Otherwise, no. And how to improve communication skills? Practice a lot in front of the mirror. I would say like st start giving mock interviews once you are done with the coding part. Start ah uh, like. just open a google meet and just talk to yourself or maybe when you are coding uh, yeah that's a very good practice for like improving communication and your interview skills when you whenever you are coding keep talking to yourself that okay now i'm making a method this method will make a call to particular parameters or maybe uh, this function is doing that so keep talking to yourself this way you will improve your communication skills also ma'am i don't know which software tools i should use for building a cv okay so let's move to what software you should actually use and before that i'll just talk about ats so currently because a um, like a lot of people actually apply to companies so companies have stopped um, shortlisting resume manually they have actually they take help of ats um, which is like a, a ats software so let me just show you one like uh this is one of an ats um, a one ats software that is uh, there on the internet so what you could do is you could upload your resume over here
okay so you can upload your resume over here any resume okay oh, just choose the entry level mid level you know so for uh, initially it's entry level this upload your resume and it will give you like um, after parsing like uh, you uh, like what is the uh, equal like what percentage it is giving you ranking wise like how good your resume is it is going to tell you about it and usually for a two column so like now i'll tell you why people prefer a one column resume the reason is that it is easy for the ats softwares to parse it and uh, so it gives a better rating or better percentage whereas when it comes to a two column resume it sometimes become difficult for the computer to read it or scan it and uh, so the uh, maybe the accuracy degrades by 1 or 2% so this is what happens talking about where you could actually make or build a resume so yeah so this is overleaf platform and i highly suggest everyone and like many people follow this uh, resume format so you can just this is the website link i'll just share it with you guys on um, yeah i'll talk about the mock thing later on so this is the uh, platform where you could actually build your resume so here you could see they have also followed the same thing mentioning the experience make a different category of research if you want if you have many mention your education languages and yeah so this is also one of the format there are a lot of formats in the market but make sure i'm writing it in the chat box you should mention your experience you should mention your education you should mention your projects and skills these are four very must sections that should be there in your resume so this is one thing that you could do and then just open the template log in with okay so now i'll tell you how you can actually build your resume uh yeah so what you can do is just first name here it is asking for the first name so just change your name over here okay just like i'll add ria the at the last name i will add this so when you'll recompile it it will get changed so this is how you could actually it will automatically make your resume if i want to mention my email id so here i'm going to add my email id let's say it's ria devarshini so just recompile it and you will see that it will mention the email id okay it will come over here just a second so let me just come to some other like experience if you talk about the experience thing let's say if i want to add um, coursera maybe if i'm i'm willing to add like a google software engineer at google so this is something that i changed for my i'll just recompile it and it will get reflected over here so this is what you have to do you have to just keep on changing content over here and it will keep on reflecting over this side and then you could just simply download the pdf and your resume is ready so this is one really beautiful platform that eases out the task of building a project or uh, resume sorry what should be the resume file name it should be your name basically and nothing else like let's say if your name is maybe mohit so mohit dot mohit resume that's it your full name and resume that's it nothing big name so that that's a good way of naming your resume file i was a discipline head in my 12th class should i mention that i'm a graduate uh you can mention that in your extra curricular activities other but it, it doesn't have any significant impact on your resume only technical things have impact on your resume me that, that keep that thing in your mind and then uh, we have to code to create a resume right no you don't have to code you have to just change the parameters over there so it's very easy and uh, 
what should we write in our profile summary you could actually write that okay hi i am so and so from so and so college and i am pursuing this in this degree whatever degree is let's say if i'm talking about myself so hi like i am ria a btech graduate from delhi technological university who pursued btech from com in computer engineering from like i pursued my btech in computer engineering mention your stream mention your college your degree then tell like let's say if you have a prior experience of doing an internship somewhere so i could write that i am having like i have done like i'm currently a googler like i'm currently an sd at google i have i'm having a prior experience of working at microsoft as an intern write about some ha achievement if you have or maybe any uh, like let's say if you are working at like if you are studying at aqua job you can mention that that you are a student at aqua job and you are studying about or you are pursuing some course this is all you could actually so it's basically the summary of your resume mention the best points in that the best out of your resume should be mentioned in your res uh, summary part can we use canva templates for building resume you can use canva templates but i don't like like them much and it's not advisable also so but it's up to you if you feel like that you are able to make a clean not so cluttered resume having a lot of consistency then yeah definitely you can can't we use a template which is provided over there uh, over where the overleaf one my screen is not showing is it so like is everyone facing that problem all right so what's next what's the ne it's visible all right all right perfect perfect uh guys i guess we are running short on time also so what all doubts do you have please write it in the chat box and i can take that but like let me just uh just summarize what we discussed today resume is very important it should have your experience it should have skills projects and your uh, work experience in that and your education details also then you should try to m make it very clean short crisp and concise it should not exceed more than one page never add your photograph to your resume and every section the consistency should be there spacing font style font size the color everything should be consistent then um, never uh, like uh, the summary should also be short and crisp add try to quantify your content add more numbers and stats to it that will like when ats is scanning your resume it will actually add a lot of points to your resume so actually the ats software scans for the numbers and whenever it get numbers it increases your points or ranking so that's one thing and um, what else yeah that, that that's pretty much and where to give mock okay so you can give mock interviews like your mock interviews will be taken a lot of mock interviews will be taken at aqua job i guess uh, you will like you will be told like there are certain modules at aqua job after every module you are supposed to give an interview and the, uh, when you pass that interview you will move to the next module so this is what happens so here you are going to get a lot of opportunities still if you want to go for other uh, mock interviews platform you can go for interview but i'll write it in the chat box interview but or maybe you can go for pram these are two very good platforms where you could actually go for mock interviews i have shared the resume template this is a one column resume template that i highly advise people to go for i have certificates like java c++ from great learning can we add yeah here you can add that what is the shortcut method to become successful coder in short time there's no shortcut method to that i'm so sorry uh, ma'am can i choose any good template whichever i want from overleaf yeah you can for sure what i actually uh, like wanted to convey you guys is that till the time you are maintaining the like it's consistent it's crisp it is not cluttered it's clean it's readable certain all these things that we discussed in today's uh, session if you are able to follow that then just go for any format and just make sure you are mentioning all the components that we discussed that should be there in your resume where to upload our resumes could you please let me i guess shikha can help you out with that like where to uh, like upload our uh, upload the resumes and yeah i'll share my linkedin profile with you guys just a second
no please don't add any sports competition certificate it should be just tech related interview but and this is the interview button pramp is basically the platforms for mock interview and uh, okay i guess it was not and the link for overleaf resume how many pages should be in the resume i, I just told it's one uh, which template is good? The one that I shared in the chat box? I prefer that. So you can just go for it. What else? What all doubts you have? Like, please write in the chat box. Else we'll just sum it up, uh, like summarize it and like we'll just wrap it up. Any other doubt, guys? Did we cover everything? Any any other doubt, please? I feel free to write it in the chat box. Did you like the session? Was it insightful? Did you like, was I able to deliver and tell you what's the significance of resume? I'll just wait for one more minute. Uh, meanwhile, if anyone have any doubt, please write it in the chat box. Feel free. Otherwise, I'll just hand over the session to. In, is this support me to build career in compliance and risk analysis? this support me to build career? Like if you want to like uh, build your career in this field, you can just your projects and the uh, things that you write in the resume should be aligned with that. So like you should have some experience of it. So yeah. How to approach recruiters. Okay, so that's a very different session, I guess. Uh, but in short, I'll just tell you that on LinkedIn, whichever company you are actually focusing on, let's say if it's Google, or maybe it's like Barclays, or maybe Microsoft, any company, just look for the recruiters of that particular company in the on LinkedIn portal, and then send them a request, and then send them a message. And please restrict yourself from sending hey, hi's and hellos, it should be a short message having like, hi, I am Ria from this college, currently, I'm doing this and this, there's an opening in your company and i'm looking for like i want to apply for this opportunity and just write something like just a brief summary about you what are you what you all you have done why you are applying to that company and like let's say if you're asking the person if there's any opening just to just write like if there's any opening in your company please do let me know and i'm adding my resume for your reference so this should be the format when you are approaching anyone on linkedin uh, summarize yourself a short intro about you tell that why you are applying at that company ask the person if there's any opportunity available and then just add your resume that's it no highs hellos or short talk on uh, linkedin is um, allowed share your experience about your interview with google which one is better double-sided page or single uh, i already told you in the starting that a single page resume when you, um is beautiful only but if you have a lot of content to write then you can go for a double like a two-page resume oh sorry a double-sided resume and what's to improve my aptitude what should i do for it uh for aptitude like take any books like there are a lot of aptitude books in the market just just buy purchase then start solving problems and i guess that that's enough to practice five questions every day and it will work share your experience about your interview with google i guess we are running out of time is it so otherwise i could share like google basically uh shortlists you on the basis of your resume first and then there were three coding interviews and, and there was one hr interview and then yeah i got shortlisted so i got selected when will you take next session let's see i don't know as of now but we'll see all right just give me a minute
do interview ask questions from resume yes they do ask a lot of questions from resume that's why i said if they, you should be your um, the credibility of the content that you have added in your resume should be very uh, correct okay uh, you should not add any fake or any copied uh, item in your resume because they might ask you anything like let's say if you have added something in your resume that i have performed this project they might ask you that okay what was your role in this project or maybe build something similar in front of me as of now so then it might be problematic for you if it was not yours how to add link of your project just like in the template only there are options like here you could see uh, you could just uh, highlight it and ha add a hyperlink to it non it background is it possible to get yeah it is definitely possible to get into google being a non it person <laughs> all right so i'll just hand over the session now please don't mention your hobbies in your resume just don't do that people do add like they are like badminton cricket or cooking painting no one is interested in knowing about your hobbies so don't add it just I, i'm repeating it sh it should be just the technical item that should be there in your resume that's it all right i guess we can end the avi are you there yeah uh hello all right so maybe you can just take over the session should we add personal traits no please uh, refrain yourself from adding any personal interest hobbies languages whatever stuff you know anything that is related to tech feel free to add it in your resume otherwise don't that's a very simple funda of building a resume if it is related to tech add it if not remove it all right guys so we are already like 8 minutes up to this session so thank you so much everyone for joining it and that's it for today and avi maybe you could just take it over sure sure hello uh, thank you so much shreya for the amazing session i also paid attention it was amazing and right so okay how is everyone doing uh percy i i believe my screen should be visible and uh, can you guys hear me is everything good to go yes great great yeah so how was your session guys yes i know you guys want a break i'll give you guys a quick i would say uh, a five minute break today 10 minutes uh, won't be possible because again we are running a little short of time uh, but right so how was the session first tell me that good great great perfect all right so yes uh, guys do not leave i know some of you guys do want to break uh, how about i give you guys a quick 5 minute break right and then we'll start the class right uh, i know i have just entered but you guys have been attending this lecture for the last one hour right so i think today 5 minutes would be nice right because again we are running a little short on time so don't worry uh, i'll give you guys a quick 5 minute break please do not leave anyone and then we'll get started with css which is the styling part of making websites so yesterday we learned how to create the structure of the website today we're going to talk about the beautification of it right so again quick i'm giving you guys a quick 5 minute break by 9:15 all of you guys should be here do not leave the class and just stay here go drink water have food right take a little break and yes uh, be back in 5 minutes all right see you in 5 minutes guys please do not leave the class
All right. Hello, everyone. And uh, please leave a plus one when you guys are back. All right. So we have a few students here with us. So we have, yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. And again, how was everyone Saturday? Okay. So I see a lot of plus ones. Good, good. So guys, let's just quickly get started with the class. Now we just have 45 minutes and there is a lot that we have to cover. All right. So today's, uh, if, if, so first tell me how many of you, you how many of you guys are attending today's lecture for the very first time? Okay, so we have one new student with us. Uh, anyone else or just one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have around five, six students with us who are new, right? Amazing. All right. So uh, students who are new, hi, I'm Avi Vashisht. I'll be your instructor for the next uh, two more days now. So this was a personal portfolio bootcamp or a front-end bootcamp, obviously by Akajog. Right. And if you go to the free bootcamp session, that is where you will see uh, my face. Right. So we started our classes on the 28th. We did on the 28th, 29th. Today is the 30th and then tomorrow will be the first. Right. So these classes are going to go till first. In fact, you will have one extra session on the second as well. So we will have lectures from the 28th till the second. Right. And the first lecture was just a quick introduction to internet. How does the internet work and everything? Yesterday, we learned about HTML. And what is HTML? HTML is the way of creating websites uh, or web pages, right? HTML allows us to create web pages on the, uh, on, on the internet, basically. And today, we're going to learn how to design that. So an example of, uh, okay. So again, just to quickly revise, what was HTML? I told you guys that HTML was hypertext markup language. Hypertext markup language, right? This was HTML. And then we have CSS. So HTML was the structure part of it. Just like you have a house, right? Now, when you're building a house, a house will have walls. It will have a floor. It will have a ceiling. It will have a roof, right? That is the overall structure of the house. So the structure of a website is built using HTML, right? Then comes the beautification. What is the beautification? The painting uh, of the of the entire house, the uh, furnishing of the house, right? Uh, making putting the tiles there, making sure that the color is there, right? Putting wallpapers or putting those uh, paints, right? Or plastering, right? That is the beautification. Correct. The beautification. So th there is building a structure, building the walls, building the ceiling, building the roof, right? Building the floor. Right. That is the building, the structure part. And then after you're done with the structure, there's a beautification, right? That is painting the walls, uh, putting down the flooring tiles, right? Uh, uh, making sure that you have false ceiling, making sure your lights are working, everything else. Right. So just like that, your structure part is handled by HTML. And then we have CSS. And what is CSS? CSS is what we call as cascading style sheets. Again, this is just the full form. But what it means is we're going to style, right? We're going to beautify our website using that. So all of your different colors, right? Background color, font color, right? Making sure everything uh, looks in a certain way. Things are on the left. Some things are on the right, right? All of that is taken care of by your CSS. Correct. Just to quickly iterate, HTML was your hypertext markup language. This is what we use to create the overall structure of the page saying that, okay, uh, we can make headings over here. There will be paragraph over here. There'll be a button over here. There'll be an input over here, right? There'll be an image over here. That is your structure part of things. Then you have CSS and CSS is your styling part, right? How do you make your things? Uh, how do you beautify things, right? So the daily time is going to be 8 to 10 PM only. So tomorrow also, and day after tomorrow also, the class will be from 8 to 10 PM. All right, 8 PM to 10 PM. Okay, so now let me just get started with the coding part. And that is how I will be able to explain it to you guys better. So first, tell me how many of you guys have VS Code installed? And how many of you guys now know how to use VS Code properly? Yeah. 
you do great great uh no so okay we'll be using vs code so guys all the students all right so all the students who are facing a little problem i would say just watch yesterday's recording right so go to again go to precourse.akijob.com and click on this free boot camps when you click on this free boot camps you scroll down over here you will see the recordings so the lectures have been recorded so you don't have to go through any pain you just have to watch this recording right click on watch recording over here you'll see uh, we can, you can click this play button and then the recording will start playing all right and over here you'll see that i took yesterday's lecture correct guys okay and over there uh, i explained that you will be needing a live extension if you don't have the live extension guys i told you the other way of loading your html files so what was the other way uh, guys what was the other way just go to your folder and in your folder just click on open with and google chrome and just open it with google chrome right this was the second way of opening a website so both ways will be working all right okay now talking about the coding part all right now like i explained yesterday that what is html used for html is used to build your overall structure right let's say that i have h1 over here which will be uh, heading 1 right then after heading 1 uh, let me go live first so that i don't have to refresh again and again this is my website now i'll have heading 1 then over here i'll have i'll have heading 2 right similarly heading 3 and heading 4 right so this is what i have heading 1 heading 2 heading 3 heading 4 right then i can even have my button right and let's call this button as uh, something like click me right okay now look at this this is plain black and white right what if i want to change this what if i want to make it red and yellow uh that is fine that is fine uh don't worry about that see guys as long as you're seeing the output that is fine right now again in this boot camp i wouldn't have the uh, time to really go through each and every one's errors so i'm really really sorry about that uh but yeah please try to uh, you know maybe just run it using if not if your uh, local host port is not wor working like your go live is not working then i would say that please try to uh, yeah try to run it using the other way all right as long as it is working yes now talking about the css part so guys the issue with this is that sometimes in websites the websites are not always going to be white and black right sometimes the websites are going to have different different colors what if i want this to be red and black or yellow and orange or red and orange so how do i make that happen i make that happen using css now if you remember yesterday's lecture guys if you remember yesterday's lecture what i told yesterday what i told you guys yesterday was that what does what does html have html has your starting and ending tags right and then it had the head then the closing of head and then it had the body and the closing of body how many of you guys remember this please tell me how many of you guys remember this guys you do great great so now i told you guys that the head contains some information right and certain extra things it contains certain information and certain extra things so now what are these extra things let me tell you that this extra thing i was referring to was that it will also contain the information for your styling for your styling right so your head does not only contain the just the information the uh, you know the icon the title all of that it will also contain some extra information that is related to your styling and i will explain that in just a second so basically what ends up happening is so basically what ends up happening is that you need another file other than just index.html obviously you will put your styling somewhere else right so you going to call it 
styles.css. So create a new file and call it styles.css. Now look at this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a link, right? I'm going to create a link to my style sheet. How am I going to do that? I'm going to, uh, basically stay, say this. Okay. So I'm going to say link and then REN style sheet and then href. So basically this is a very standard way. And this is how you link an HTML to your CSS, right? If I Google link HTML to CSS, this is what I see, right? You will have to use the link tag and you'll have to say REN. Now, what does the REN stand for? Does anyone know what does the REN stand for? It stands for relationship. Okay. So basically it says that, okay, we are linking a file, which is this file styles or CSS is the file, right? Obviously we created styles.css dot CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So basically we're linking our HTML to our styles, right? And over here, I'm saying that the linking is basically relation. The relation between this file and that file is that that file is the style sheet. It is where my styling is. Right. So basically what I do is I link a style sheet and I'm the linked file is this one. So at the end of the day, whatever styling I will put over here, right? Whatever styling I will put over here, I will see it getting linked to this HTML and I'll make you guys understand this one now also in just a second, right? So basically it is like, okay, understand this, understand this. Let us go to, uh, let us go to, let's say, let us go to facebook.com. Right. Let's go to facebook.com. Now, when we go to facebook.com, there's some theme, blue, gray, blue, gray, white, then green, right? The theme would be mostly Facebook's theme is blue and white. Correct. Everyone agrees that Facebook's theme is blue and white. Yes. Yes. I'll cover the linking part first. Okay. Understand this theory. Facebook's theme is blue and white. If I go to Twitter, right? Twitter is now uh, X apparently, but what is the theme of uh, this thing? It's black and white and blue, right? Exactly. Black and white would, I would say most theme, the, uh, yeah, the biggest theme would be black and white, right? Okay. Uh, let's say I go to some other websites, like, uh, let's say I go to Snapchat, right? If you guys have used Snapchat, Snapchat is what? Yellow and white, right? Snapchat is yellow and white. Correct. Exactly. So what you end up realizing is guys, tell me this. Obviously you have, you have Snapchat's website, right? You have Snapchat's website and you have Snapchat styling. You have Snapchat's styling style sheet. Obviously these two are linked together because let's say you have Facebook's website and you have Facebook style sheet, right? And Facebook style sheet is linked to Facebook's HTML. It's not like Facebook will randomly or Snapchat will randomly start picking up styles from Facebook style sheet or Facebook's website will randomly pick styles from Snapchat, right? Has that ever happened? No, right? Why? Why is that? Because the Snapchat's HTML file will always pick the styles from snapchats.css file. Similarly, Facebook's HTML file will always take styling from your Facebook's style uh, sheet, right? Facebook.css. So just like that, it is a very simple logic. Basically, we are saying that, okay, since we are coding, our index will be linked to our style sheet only. So this is our index file and this will be a styles file. And my styles file is linked to my index you via this line. So that is why linking is important. Right? So linking is important so that you can link your style sheet with your website. Right? And that's it. So again, this is a, a required mandatory thing to do whenever you are creating websites. So this is part of the setup. So next time, whenever you're setting up the website, right? You will set up the HTML head. You'll have the title and you'll have this. You will definitely 10, 100% have this. 
Why? Because you will be linking your styles file also. Is this clear to everyone? Please tell me if this is clear to everyone. Great, great. Okay. So now I will teach you guys how the styling really works. The styling works very simple, right? We have the body. How many of you guys remember what was the body tag? Yesterday I told you guys that the body tag was nothing but the body tag was where the content is. So whatever the user is seeing is technically inside the body tag. So can I say visually my entire page is just the body tag? Can I just say that? Because technically if you look over here, whatever is in my body tag is whatever the user is seeing in this white, white part. Uh, ignore the URL part, ignore the tab part, ignore the icon part. But if I talk about the page, whatever I have in my body is seen in the page. Correct. Now look at this. What I will do is I will directly just say body. And now I will just write English. I'm going to say body color is equal to red. And look at what happened. Do you guys see what happened immediately? What did I say? I said that the body and I said body, I'm going to give the body as a, a background color of red. Right. Now I can say I'm going to give it a, let's say what else, what other thing can I say? Let's say I can give it a color. I'll tell you what is the color. So the moment I write white over here, you will understand what is color. So guys, what is color and what is background color? Background color is red, meaning the color that is behind, right? That is red. But the color, the normal color, what is the normal color? The normal color is actually what we call as your font color, right? So CSS does not have anything known as font color. It just has normal color, right? Is, is this clear to everyone? What does it look like? It looks pretty cool, right? The fact that I can change it to anything, I can make this black. And now the background color is black and now color is white. And what theme does this look like? This looks like the theme of Twitter, right? If I go to Twitter, what was Twitter's theme? Black background and white text. Uh, wow. Yeah. Black background and white text. So similarly, what, what does our website look like? Black background and white text. Amazing. Right. Very amazing. So again, basically what you can do with styling is you can do all of these things only, right? Let me show you guys something even better. Let's say I want to change the color of my heading one. How do I do that? I copy this thing. I go over here and I say H1 and then let's say I will give this a color of blue. This becomes blue. I can even give this a color of light blue. It becomes light blue. No, 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 no. This is not mandatory. I just wrote it just like that. Guys, I, I just wrote that just like that. Okay. So how does this look? Are you guys getting a hang of it? Now, if I want to style H2, what will I do? I will say H2. Right. And I will style H2. How will, what color should I give to H2? Let's say I want to give the color of uh, light pink light coral. So I've given that color to H2 now. Isn't this pretty cool? Now you need to understand that in, in HTML also, right? In fact, not just in HTML, uh, in CSS also. So there are a lot of things that you can do, right? Sometimes I will tell you is sometimes let's say, uh, you want to change the font size of this heading. I know that this heading is very large, but have a look at this size. Isn't, isn't this heading bigger or let's say, have a look at this X. This X is huge, right? If I want to just copy this and write X over here, let's say I write X over here, right? And I have this, now I want to increase the size of this X. So how do I do that? So there is a property called font size. Now font size is in pixels. Look at this. If I give it a font size of 36 pixels. Right. Did you see it enlarged a little? Let's say I give it a font size of 56 pixels. 
it became bigger. 156 pixels, even bigger. Right? 256, even bigger. If I make it smaller, 6 pixels. 6 pixels is so small. Are you guys getting? Look at this. 6 pixel is actually so small. If I make it 600, so large. Right? I hope you guys are understanding. So basically what you can do is you can change a lot of things, right? You can change a lot of things using just the CSS part. So are you guys ready to understand all of these things? This was just a brief introduction to CSS. I'll tell you what have we done. What we've done is firstly, we linked our style sheet to our HTML so that I'm not using Snapchat styling. I'm not using Facebook styling. I'm not using Netflix styling. I'm using my own styling. First point. Second point, what we did was we started to start changing the colors, the font size and all of those things. Now CSS has a lot of properties guys, whatever you can imagine CSS can do whatever you can imagine, right? Look at this. There's also this concept of border. I can give a border of let's say two pixels, solid red. Look at how my heading has a border, right? If I make it 20 pixels. It will be a thicker border. If I make it one pixel, it will be a thinner two is a little bigger, right? Five looks like this a little thicker. Correct. This is the color. I'll teach you what solid means. So basically your styling allows you to do all of these things. It allows you to change different, different things, right? Give borders, give colors, give change the font size. You can even change the gap. You can even change the gap. And I'll tell you that also. All right. So are you guys ready? Let's start learning. Right. Okay. Now there's one concept that I had to teach you guys yesterday, but I decided not to Right. And today we're going to start learning about that. Right. So you need to understand one thing right now. What did our body have or what, did, what was our page? What did our page look like right now? Right now, uh, our page basically looked like this. Our page had a heading, right? Let's say there's a heading. So we had an H1, then we have an H2, then we have an H3, then we had an H4, then we had a button, right? Uh, then we had a lot of other other things, right? So don't you think this will get a little out of hand? Because see, let's, let's go to Wikipedia itself. If we go to Wikipedia and if I search something, right? If I search something, even though I told you guys that we have one heading, we have one line, then we have this text over here. I had to teach you that. Then we have text, then we have paragraph, then again a paragraph, then again a paragraph, then over here images. Don't you think this is going to get very, very long? This code is going to be very long, right? What do you think? I think this code is going to be very, very long. Correct. So how do we organize this? Because a person, if a person starts to write one line by line, line by line, line by line, it's going to be very annoying, right? So what CSS actually came up with was the box model, right? Was the box model. And I'll tell you what precisely this box model means. So the way I like to look at it is everything on a website is a box, right? Everything on this website is just a box. And I will prove that to you. Have a look at this. What I will do is I will take a screenshot. Just a second. I'll have to take a screenshot. What I will do is I will take a screenshot of this thing. Sorry. And I'll tell you about the box model. I am feeling a little sleepy today. Uh, my apologies if the energy is not high. But I hope all of you guys are not feeling sleepy. I'll keep the energy high. Don't worry. But yes. Okay. So this was the website. Right. That we were having a look at. Wikipedia. This is how Wikipedia looks. Now the way I like to look at Wikipedia is very, very simple. So in fact, not just me. The people who built HTML, what they said was try to make everything in a box, 
HTML CSS is all about making things fall into boxes. So the way I like to look at it is that this thing is a box. All right. Over here, this is a box. Okay. Then this itself looks like a box that you guys can probably see only. Again, nothing, nothing much to do. Then over here, I think this is a box. This entire thing is a big box. Right. Then when we talk about this, this can be a box. Basically try to make as many boxes as you can. And that is your box model. Right. Basically what you do is you try to divide everything into boxes. You make a box out of everything. I don't know if you guys, I was able to make you guys understand because look at it. The way a website looks like to me is a website will have a header. Then a website will have your main body, right? The main content. Then inside the main content, inside the main content, what it is going to have is inside the main content. Sometimes what it has is this, it will have a left side, right? And then it will have a right side, right? Let's say this right side is an image on the left side. You will have more boxes, which will be your headings. You have some text over here. Then you have another little box inside this box. You have your P tag, right? Over here, you have your image. So this is my image over here. I have some logo. I have some buttons over here. The, the, are you guys understanding what I'm trying to say? Basically what you do is you convert everything into a box, right? And this goes for any website, right? Be it Wikipedia. Let's go to, again, let's go to twitter.com, right? If I go to twitter.com, even this landing page, even this is a box, right? Uh, let's see, even if I cancel this and get rid of this, even this is a box. What is the box over here? I'll show you. So the box over here is basically this thing. This is one box. This is the other box. This box has this box, this box. Basically there's no correct or right way of doing it. Just keep on making boxes. Even this is a box. This is a box. This is a box, right? This thing is a box. So your job is to just make as many boxes as you can. Is this making sense guys? Please tell me if it is making sense. And again, this goes for any website in this planet, any website, be it, even if it is active job, right? I'll tell you as an active job developer, even I had to make all of these boxes. Look at this. So this thing is probably a box. This you guys can see this is a box, right? This box itself has two boxes. One is this box. Then the other is this box, right? Over here, you have this box. Then over here, you have the, these boxes, right? Then again, this is a box probably. Are you guys getting the hang of it? Please tell me if this is making sense to everyone. And every box in HTML is what we call as a div. Every box in HTML is what we are going to call as a div. So basically what we're going to do is on our own, according to our own wish, we will just club things together. So let's say we have a few headings, right? Let's say we have a few headings. What I will do is I will club these headings inside a box. And this box is what I call as a div. A div is nothing but it's just a box. It's like a container. And why do you want to containerize things? Why do you want to containerize? Just like you would want to containerize anything else. Right. Just like you would want to containerize any, if you have a little example, or if you have a little pre-knowledge of code, you will understand that even code, one good practice is to make everything into an object, make everything modular, right? So basically what we do is these, these headings and these P tags are not in the air. They're not random. They are inside boxes, right? And every box will have a certain thing to do. So look at this, even though, even though over here, this is my output, right? Even though this is my current output, what I will do is I will just put, let's say, 
let's say I have this heading and then I have a P tag which says welcome to Twitter. Sorry. What I will do is I will put these two things in a box. Why? Because I want to, that is my design. And now what will happen is did anything happen to my UI? Did anything change? I'm so sorry guys. I had to sneeze. Did anything change in the UI? No, right? Exactly. This is basically what the box model is. And now what I can do is look at this. Now, let's say if I give my div a border and what is the border I'll give one pixel solid red. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see how the box is covering my X and my welcome to Twitter? Right. I hope this is making sense to everyone, right? What we did was we just containerized things. It's like, it's like I have a, a folder, right? Inside the folder, the contents is the same, but I just put it inside a folder so that it is neater, right? It is more organized. And now look at what my code looks like. One div, one box, and I can have another div, right? And that's it. And now what I want to teach you guys is inside this div also, I can give this a custom color. Background color can be, let's say yellow, right? Uh, or let's, let's do something good. Let's say light, uh, light green, right? And let's make this black and let's make this blue. I'm so sorry guys. The theme color theme is not the best. Uh, let's make the P color as black as well. I hope you guys are seeing how I'm quickly making the changes, right? Now my div has a background color of light green. It also has a, uh, let me do dark cyan. I think that will be visible or uh, what will be visible. Let's just keep it red only, even though red doesn't look nice, but you guys can see, right? I hope everyone can see all the stylings that I've did. I have done right. So our body is black color of the body is white, right? H1 color I've given custom. So I can technically get rid of this. H1 color is black. Font size is this. P color is black. H2 color, we are, not, we are not using H2. We can get rid of this. Then we have div. The div has a border of 20 pixels, solid and red. Right? So solid border. See, there are different, different types of borders. I can make this dashed also. Dashed will look like dashed. Obviously, like dashed, right? Dotted. Then apart from this, I can have something like... Uh, there are other, other types of borders as well. Uh, let's say, uh, give me a second border style. Dashed, uh, double groove groove is really nice. So I can even do groove, right? Look at how groove looks. It looks a little cool, right? Look at this two shades automatically. So basically how, how do I know all of these things? You might be wondering guys, this, you will understand this by practice. So just say border property in CSS, right. And go to this W3 school class and uh, W3 schools website over here. You will understand that there are different, different border styles and these border styles can be anything, right? So look at this. We have solid. This would be dotted. This would be dashed. This would be inset. This would be outset, right? Uh, this would be ridge groove double correct. None hidden, hidden and none are just hidden only. But, but I hope you guys can see that there are different, different styles, right? This is what dotted looks like. It's just dots, a lot of dots, right? Yes, 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 yes. I will teach you that also. Don't, don't worry guys. That is a very important question. So students are asking, how do we differentiate between this? I will teach you guys that first. Tell me if everyone is understanding this. Other than this, I also want to teach you guys something. I want to teach you guys a little about spacing, right? Now there are two kinds of spacing. One spacing is sometimes you would want to give a spacing inside your div, right? Sometimes you would want to give a spacing inside your div. So again, what was your div? Your div was nothing, but your div was just a box, right? Let's say this is my box. So sometimes let's say you have some content over here. 
sometimes what will happen is you won't want to, and this is your body, right? Sometimes you would want to give a space over here outside the div. Okay. Sometimes you would want to give the space inside and I'll show you guys a live example. Now look at this right now. If I say body margin is uh, just give me a second and understand this. Okay. Now look at this right now. My, my div is very, very close to the body, right? It is edge to edge. Do you see how this is edge to edge? Right. It's completely edge to edge. Sometimes what I would want is. Yes. Sometimes what I would want is I would want to give a div outside spacing. So let's say if I give a margin of 20 pixels, what would this mean? Look at this. What did this do? This gave me a margin. So if I inspect element and guys look at this very cool thing as well. So if I inspect element, right? If I inspect element and over here, if I go, I will press on this arrow icon and I will select this. So do you see this yellow, yellow line? Do you see this yellow? This is what my margin is. Look at this. If I am increasing my margin, look at the orange thing. Do you see that the orange thing is increasing all around the div? So look at this. What is the margin? It is 122 now. I'm increasing the margin one by one. If I start decreasing it, what is happening? The overall spacing around a div, around a box is changing. Please tell me if everyone is understanding this, this concept. Right. Okay. Now students are asking if I only want to change the top margin. That is also good. Sometimes you would only want to give a top margin, right? So get rid of this and just say margin top, give 50 pixels. Now there's a 50 pixel gap on the top of your margin. Look at this. If I inspect element, what does this look like? There's only a gap on the top. There's no gap on the right, left or the bottom only at the top, right? Sometimes you would only want to give it from the top and the left. How will you do that? Just say margin top 50 margin left 50. So now from the top, it is 50 from the left. It is 50. I hope this is making sense. So, okay. Somebody wants me to repeat. So basically what I'm saying is that what is margin? Margin is the overall space that is there outside a div. So let's say you have a margin, you have this div, right? Look at this. You have this div and what you are doing is you're increasing the gap outside on the four corners of the div outside. You're giving more space. So let's say if there were two divs, look at this. I would like to show you guys something. Uh, look at this. Let's say I have some text over here, which says, hi, hello. Okay. And I want you to look at this. So I'm going to give this a color of white only. So look at this. I have this text. Hi, hello. Right. And do you see that this text is so close? So, so, so close to my uh, box, right? What I will do is I will give this a two pixel border only. Right. And what I can do now is I can, let's say, uh, yeah, this is good. So do you see how these, these two boxes are just attaching, touching each other? Let's say I don't want to do that. Right. Let's say in fact, I have another div only. I have another div and this div says, hi, hello. Look at this. So these two divs and these two divs are basically touching each other. I don't want that to happen. So what will I give? I will give them a space, but where do I give them a space? I will give them a space outside. So now if I add a margin, look at this. If I add a margin of 10 pixels, do you see how there's a gap now? And what is the gap? There's a gap of 10, 10 pixels around the div. So look at this. If I go over here and this is my div styling. If I'm increasing the gap, look at how the gap is increasing. Do you see this? So right now my margin is what 90 pixels. So I have 90 pixels of spacing around both of these divs. Is this making sense? Right. Is this making sense guys? Please tell me if this is making sense. Okay. Now have a look at this. Now, sometimes what will happen is sometimes let's say my code is my color is black only. 
So this is black. Now look at this. Do you see that inside this green div, there's very less space. If I, by the way, I'll show you guys something, your headings by default have certain margin. So if you get rid of this heading and p tag margin, even this is too attached. Do you see how the divs are too attached, like from the inside? If I, if I talk about uh, what I'm saying now is I'm saying that inside this div, inside this div, do you see that there's so less space? It's basically touching each other, this thing. Look at this, there's so less space inside, right? So I told you guys, right? There will be two types of spaces. One space will be outside. One space will be outside over here that you would want to change. And the other space will be inside, inside the div. Let's say inside this div, you want to change the space. So how do you change that space? Opposite of margin, just like we had margin, right? Just like we had margin, the opposite of margin is what? Padding. So what you will do is you will give padding. So look at this. I will give a padding. And when I give a padding, look at how my space is changing, right? So now what I can do is my padding is inside this div. Uh, it is not really visible. What I'll do is I'll make this as uh, white. Okay. Now you guys can see the padding. Now look at this. I'm increasing the padding. I'm increasing the space. So how is the space increasing? Do you see how all the four corners, all the four corners have, have a thick lining now, right? So what, what ended up happening was, What ended up happening was over here, I increased the space inside. So inside the div, I have increased the space. So this is the empty space now, right? Similarly over here, this is my con content and over here, I have all the white space outside and outside. What is the amount of space I have on the top left, bottom, right? I have a space of padding of 60 pixels. And again, just like what I could do with my margin, I can only, I can also add specific padding, right? So look at this. I can just say something like, let me get rid of this. And let me say something like padding left is equal to what? 20 pixels. So now my padding left is equal to 20 pixels. So do you see how only the left side has 20 pixels gap? I can even say padding bottom, right? Or over here, I will say my bad. Over here, I'm going to say padding bottom. Right. Padding bottom has what? 20 pixels. Look at this. How now at the bottom of the div, right? At the bottom of the div, I have a space inside, which is 20 pixels. Please tell me if this is making sense to everyone. Did this make sense? Great. Great. And just like that, guys, just like that, what you can do is you can also do amazing things, right? What kind of amazing things can you do? Look at this. You can also give your div width. You can say width is equal to 50 pixels, right? Or you can say a hundred pixels. Now, whatever div you are creating will have a width of 200 pixels, right? You can even give it a height of 200 pixels. So now what does this look like? Let me, let me actually get rid of the content and let me just have the div. Doesn't this look like a square? Why, why is it looking like a square? Because I have a div, I have a border. I can get rid of the border too. I have a background color padding. I don't need width of 200 height of 200. If I give it a margin, margin 50 pixels will look like this. It is now it has 50 pixels on the top. 50 on the left, 50 at the bottom, 50 on the right. Having 50 space on the right and bottom is not mattering because there are, there is so much space anyways. Right. Correct. Now look at this very, very cool thing. Let's say I have a border radius. Now look at this. If I give it a radius of five pixels, just look at the corner, five pixels, 10 pixels, 15 pixels, 20 pixels. Do you see how my div is becoming curved? So even if I want to make a curved div, I can just give it a border radius, right? 50 pixels. Correct. Can you guys see this? Please tell me if you guys can see this. 
If not, I will show it to you guys like this only. Now, look at this amazing thing. I'll increase this, right? One by one. Keep on, have, keep on looking at this square. Right? Do you, do you see something happening? As I'm increasing my border radius, since my border radius is increasing, do you see what happened to my div? Again, I'll do it again. So from looking like a square, it is slowly and slowly. Now I'll increase it slowly and slowly. The edges are getting curved. They're getting more and more curved, more and more curved, more and more curved. And after a point, it becomes a circle. It becomes a circle, right? Isn't that cool? Now, obviously your height and width need to be the same to become a circle. Because if I have this, right, if I have this, and if I have something like this, this will not look like a circle. This looks like a capsule. Right. If I have my width as 200 and if I have my height as 400, this is look, this looks like a capsule too. So basically we have a rectangle. How do I make a rectangle? Either having width larger and height smaller or height larger and width smaller. And then if I start playing with my border radius, right? If I make it 10, 20, uh, right? 50, then 80, then 100. At one point, it looks like a vertical capsule, right? Similarly, similarly, if I have my width as large as 400 and my height is 200, what will it look like? A horizontal capsule. Why? Because without any border radius, it's a rectangle. Without any border radius, it's a rectangle. But as I'm increasing my border radius, right? Slowly and slowly, I can see that it is forming something like a capsule. So guys, do you remember seeing this somewhere? Do you remember seeing this somewhere? Let me, let me show it to you guys again. I told you guys that this is what we'll be building, right? So do you see this? Haven't we built what we, we wanted to? So yesterday you guys were not aware how to build this. Now are you guys aware? Because see, I can just put a text like HTML inside this. Okay. I can give my color of, uh, uh, by default, it should be black, but I can give it a color of black over here. Right. And now I can give it a padding too. Do you, do you see this? Now I can just increase my font size, right? I can increase my font size to something like 50 pixels or uh, 150. Isn't, isn't it the same thing guys? Just the only thing is it has a border, right? Yes. You can also make triangles, but triangles is a little difficult. I will not teach you how to make a triangle. Okay. Triangle is very, very difficult. So guys, now tell me what all things do you know? Now you know how to give your uh, text a color. So if I ask you to give it an orange color, will you be able to do that? Yes, you will be able to do that. If I ask you to give it a border, see, this is a border. So I will, I will show you guys something. How do you make a vertical border? To make a vertical border, what you do is you do something very simple. To make a vertical border, I will, I will just teach you that in just a second. So look at this. Let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this also. Okay. This is my div. Let me change this font size to this. Okay. This is my div. If I give it a border guys, please have a look at this border. All right. Again, I know my, uh, is my face lagging? It is, uh, it is lagging a little anyways. 
So let's say if I give it a border of two pixels, solid, light green. It looks like this, right? Now look at this. What I will do is I'll just say border, right? What have I done? I've given just a border, right? Right. If I say border top, what will that be? Just one border top. If I say border left, what will that be? Just border left. Border bottom, that'll be border bottom. So I can just give border right. And that will mean I have a vertical line. So are you guys getting a hang of things? Right. So basically using CSS. Yes, yes. You can do that too. Border right and border left. Do this. Now you have two vertical lines. Isn't that cool? Right. Correct guys. So basically tell me, are you guys getting a hang of these things? So now if I, if I think about it, let's have a look at what our portfolio will have. Okay. Let's have a look at what our portfolio will have. I think because of this Figma only my uh, screen starts to lag. What I will do is I'll open a Figma. I have the app as well. Let me open it through the app. Maybe it will lag less. Okay, I'll have to sign in in this app. Never mind. Uh, guys, you'll have to bear with me if my uh, screen is lagging a little. I'm so sorry about that. Have a look at this, guys. So over here, what, what do you see? See, I will tell you. What if I told you that these icons were images only? Right. Ignore the icons. Icons are images only. Ignore them. So now you guys know how to give a different color to the text. Now you know how to make this capsule. Now you know how to give the text also. Now you know how to make this also. Right. I will explain to you guys what you don't know is making things look side by side. Right now, if you guys have noticed something, did you guys notice this by the way, that in HTML, in HTML, everything by default is one below the other. Right. Let's say if I have this diff. After this div, if I create another div, another div, call this CSS, uh, call this Figma. What will happen is these three things are one below the other. Uh, let it refresh. Do you see how everything in HTML is one below the other vertically? What I haven't taught you guys is how to make it look next to each other. Right. So even that is due. So apart from the fact that how to make things next to each other, what have you learned? Look at this. You know how to give images. See individually asking. I think this left side, entire left side, you will be able to create. Right. The entire left side, you will be able to create because this is an ordered list. This is an order, an ordered list, right? Over here, you have a text over here. These are all images only. I will give you the image links. All right. Don't worry about the icons. This, you now know, just give a div, uh, have it a little padding and give this a border radius. It will look like this and make sure it has a border, right? Over here, there's just a border, right? Then over here, this, there's also a border left and a border bottom, right? So basically that is what the entire portfolio is. The font also I'll teach you how to change. So now what is left is that I need to teach you how to, uh, change the font. I need to teach you how to put things next to each other. That is left. How do I teach you how to put things next to each other is something that we'll be worrying about tomorrow, right? See guys, we still have tomorrow's class and after tomorrow's class also, we have one extra class. So don't worry. We have a lot of time, but tomorrow we're going to get started with the coding part because the best way to learn CSS is via coding only. All right. So now you need to understand that the only thing left is understanding how to place items next to each other. Other than that, I think everyone should be able to understand that. How is everything being built? Right. Please tell me. Agreed. Okay. So guys, don't worry. Tomorrow's class is going to be a little hectic, but I'll try to explain everything as much as I can. Right. And then after tomorrow, we'll have a final class on first October also. Okay. I mean, uh, on second October, sorry.
so we have two more classes left so do not worry about anything at all please do not worry about anything at all all right okay great so i hope uh, today's class i was able to understand make you guys understand how css is working right did i do a quick justice of what css is i think for one hour we have learned a lot in just one hour i've i've explained each and every not each and everything see css and html are like an ocean you can always learn new things even i till date i'm learning new things in css and html it's a never ending journey but it is understand it is about understanding the funda right it is understanding the concept did you guys understand the concept of css like i explained html was the structure of the house css is the painting and the beautification and the flooring the wallpaper changing color right making sure that things are on the right things are on the left that is what css is about and i will teach you guys more about css tomorrow with while coding about our portfolio all right so tomorrow's class is a very important class guys tomorrow we'll have two hours to code this entire thing so i hope to see you there tomorrow and please be there all right 8 to 10 pm same timing tomorrow now i'll let you guys be i know you guys have to have dinner so go have your dinners enjoy but i hope i was able to make you guys understand a little about how css is working all right that sounds good great so i hope to see you tomorrow guys and please be there 8 to 10 pm and thank you so much for watching and yeah uh, please take care and enjoy your saturday nights tomorrow will be a sunday night we'll be here tomorrow as well and then monday night as well but don't worry after monday you guys will be free and uh, yes definitely i hope to see you tomorrow and thank you so much for giving me your time i'll just end the class now thank you